Hey friends, I thought for this installment of the uh, series I would show you guys how I scratch built the Algoma Central uh, section house, but it didn't go very well. The first one I built was just awful, and honestly the video, I shot probably two and a half hours of video, it's just dry and boring, and I can, I can cut it down, but then it doesn't make a lot of sense, so I've I've mentioned before that I've made videos that didn't get past the editing phase because I just gave up on them. This one's kind of the same, but I I think I've been able to salvage it because what I did there's a lot of the techniques I used for for uh, building the first one I used on the second one. I just didn't film building the second one, so I hope that makes sense. I'll show you guys uh, kind of what I did and I'll show you the finished product the second one it's much better it's still not perfect but I, I think it'll do I'm not generally perfectionist but I think I could do better I'm just gonna leave it for now though I'm gonna work with what I have and maybe replace it in the future anyway on to the video this is the plastic I used it's uh, the closest I could find to end scale clapboard uh, it looked all right in my eyeballs. It's the smallest thing the uh, hobby shop had. And these are the doors I used. They're a little heavy for this application, but you can't see the doors from the aisleway anyway. And these are the windows. Uh, the hobby shop didn't really have what I needed, but I bought this thinking I could cut what I needed out of them. Uh, it didn't really work out as well as I planned. They're still a little big, but They'll do. Be good enough. This is the floor plan I used. It's from uh, Chris Vanderheide's blog. Anytime you Google something about Algoma Central, Chris Vanderheide's blog is going to come up. The guy knows his stuff. He's got a huge blog. I'll link to it in the description if anybody wants to go have a look. So I drew the uh, floor plan out with a pencil and then cut it out with the knife. Light pass as I found was the key to this. The anytime I got too heavy the blade would start to go wonky and I'd screw up so multiple light passes. I'm glad I bought this square, this metal square. It helped me keep my line straight. Although on the when I went to cut out the windows it helped me keep the line straight. I mean, they were straight lines, they just weren't perpendicular to each other or parallel. <laughs> Made a bit of a mess out of it. But live and learn. And here's the part where I free the floor pan from the uh, plastic sheet. And once that was done, I decided to lay out the doors and windows to try and get my uh, spacing correct. And I had to eyeball it because I didn't have actual measurements. I, I've since learned that a two-story building is roughly 20 feet tall. And I think on Chris's uh, blog, it said somewhere something about the pitch of the roof. I think I just went with 45 degrees, but I'm not sure. It was somewhere around there. So, Yeah, I'm still learning this program. It can do a lot more than I ask it to, but i got to figure out how. I tried to zoom in on what I was doing, zoom in and move over, and I lost half of what I was doing. There, uh, The windows were smaller here. I cut them out fairly small. And uh, I, I think somewhere between this and the bigger windows are what I needed. See, I thought, well, what if I make put two, two of these small windows together and make one big one? That's actually what I ended up doing. I just cut these out of the off the sprue to do this. That's what I went with. So there we're. I'm laying it all out, and it's too cramped. It's way too small. The proportions are all wrong. I went and 
held this up to the building that it's going to sit beside, which is a one-story building. And this was just barely taller than the one-story building. And yeah, I, I cut the windows out. I snuck up on them with the file to not go too big. But I still screwed it up a little bit, left some gaps. But yeah, this was the first attempt. The second one went much better. So after yesterday, I came down this morning and I was looking at this thinking it just doesn't look right. I held it up against this, which is supposed to be a two story, a one story building here. This is the two story building, and obviously. They're like the same size. So I eyeballed it wrong. I put the door, I held the door up to this spot here. And I could see that, yeah, this is not right. So I redid it. Using the same techniques you saw, I just left a lot more space, made it a little bit taller, a lot more space between the floors. I think it'll work. They were small houses to begin with. I just wonder if it's tall enough. It measures out. Uh, the footprint measures out against the uh, drawings. It's just the height, distance between the windows, that kind of stuff I had to eyeball. I'm going to go with it. I don't even know if this building's properly scaled. Looks good. The doors look right compared to what I have. So I'm gonna go with it. Something else I screwed up. The windows, they're supposed to be like in the middle of the house. I don't know how I did that, but scratch building isn't as easy as it looks. <laughs> but that's not, that's gonna be the side that you won't really see unless you're looking. So I'm gonna let it live. This side's better-ish. Yes, better-ish. I've sprayed it with testers, uh, white, even white plastic. You gotta put paint on it. Um, it's a gloss paint I used. I'm gonna use, I'll hit it with dull coat when I'm finished putting the doors and window frames in. I've got this green I'm gonna use for the uh, window frames. I still need to add the addition on the back. I kind of screwed up. I put the window right where the addition goes. So you know what? No windows on the back of the house. That's it. <laughs> so I'm not cutting another one. This is what I've come up with. I'm showing it from this angle because this is the way you will see it from the aisle. Um, the other side's not as nice, but it uh, you won't be able to see this anyway. I thought it would be so easy scratch building a building, but I have done it before. These windows don't have a very big trim around them, so my cuts have to be really exact or you'll see a gap. And you can see one at that bottom window. There's uh I might I'm gonna next time I'm at the hobby shop, I'm gonna look for some really thin strips of plastic to see if I can use as trim around the windows to cover that. But it doesn't change the fact that I think that window is crooked anyway. And uh, Some of you scratch building guys, you uh, make it look so easy. Oh, just, uh, just cut a window here and cut a door there. Well, I don't know how to keep the door straight or the window straight. But I guess practice makes perfect. This is my second one and it's better than the first one so I will keep plugging away this is the other side you can't see this side it's pretty much against the wall but uh, it didn't come out too bad either but yeah I have dreams of scratch building the house that I live in now and the house I grew up in I'd like to scratch build the uh, train station that's here in town but uh, if this was any indication, it's it's not just a simple matter of get some plastic and start cutting holes for doors and windows. So I'll have to uh, I'll have to lower my expectations. I think for some of my early builds. Alrighty, so there there you have it. 
Uh, if you like what you saw, why don't you uh, hit the subscribe button and um, follow along as I build this thing. Uh, and stay tuned for the next installment, which should be scenicing this little corner of the world. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.